What's up, guys? Uh, this is uh, day one, minute one of my two-day, 1,300-some mile ride from North Florida back up to Minnesota. Um, flip you guys around here. This is the bike. There we go. As you can see, she is loaded up. I got a pillow on there. I got a full duffel bag. I've got my sissy bar bag. And we are loaded up and we are ready to go. So I'm gonna gear up with uh, chaps and vest, gloves, helmet and all that. We're gonna grab some gas and then we're gonna get on the road. We're loaded up, we got gas. And we are rolling out. Good news, guys. We only have 1,223.7 miles left, which uh, should only take 20 hours and 57 minutes. Maybe a little longer than that, a little farther than that. That's just to the to the last Harley dealership that I'm visiting on this trip. And then I still got to get home. So departure time, Tallahassee is about 7:45. First stop, Harley of Dothan. Uh, it's a little rainy in Tallahassee. It's sprinkling. I wouldn't even call it raining yet. It's definitely wet. It's not awful. Like I've got a little bit of sprinkles on my visor. A couple thoughts. I've had a couple, I've had three things with my gear go bad, which have already made today, well, are going to make today kind of an expensive day. So number one, um, all my leathers, except my boots and gloves. So my chaps, my jacket, and my vest, I bought them all used. They were, uh, the guy said a year or two old um, when I bought them. I think they were probably older. They were a little more worn than I think you would probably do in just a couple of years. But uh, so the chaps, the strap in front with uh, the buckle, that just clean snapped off. So I'm riding without chaps. Um, it's not really something I like to do. Interstate riding without chaps is not advisable. Yeah, it's gonna rain, rain, and we're gonna cover the gear is what we're gonna do. So, <laughs> not wearing chaps. Um, my right glove has seen probably its last ride. If I go down, none of that's gonna be helpful or protective. <sighs> so, crappy thing about having to cover gear is you basically have to unload the whole rig put plastic bags all over everything so you have to basically repack everything because i've got to put plastic bags over the pillow the suitcase covering rain gear little garbage bag or covering luggage this is one of those situations where something better than nothing you know what i mean about as waterproof as we're gonna get i think gloves are bad the zipper on my jacket which is too big or bad and my chaps are bad so time to get to dothan and buy some new shit all right, guys, we already made our first stop. We're about 20 miles into the trip. And, uh, you know, I thought I was gonna find some dry crowd cloud break um, when I got outside of Tallahassee, just based on what the radar said. But that was not the case, unfortunately. Got, uh, yeah, about 20 miles outside of town. And sure enough, the rain started to really come down, so I figured uh, really no use in just waiting to get soaked and then being miserable for the next hour and a half before my next stop. And then even then, I'd still be wet and miserable, so not really what we're looking for. So I put on my, uh, my rain gear trunks Believe it or not, I am packed to about 100% capacity. So uh, that is to say that I would have nowhere to put uh, my leather jacket if I wanted to just wear my rain coat. So, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Wearing the leather jacket, it's gonna get wet, should keep me Mostly dry, should, it's my operative word in there. We're going to wait until 
our lineage is clear, like here. What is this asshole doing? Yeah, oh yeah. We are not gonna regret putting on rain gear because we're in for a wet ride, boys and girls. All right guys, pardon the helmet beard, but uh, first stop, Harley Dauphin. Going to uh, check it out, maybe grab a new jacket, new set of chaps, definitely a new set of gloves. And uh, yeah, my, uh, my morning coffee is asking to speak to a manager. So I'm gonna go take care of that. All right guys, quick update here. Just loading back up here at Dothan Harley Davidson. Like I mentioned earlier, I had three pieces of leather fail on me this morning. They were all heavily used. Definitely got my money's worth out of them. Said my, uh, the strap on my chaps, the waist strap came undone. Super surprising. Didn't see that coming, to be totally honest. I uh, ripped a big old hole in my leather gloves, which was also a surprise. And then the zipper on my leather jacket snapped. So, that's how my trip started. I am back on the road. I've got a new uh, crash ready jacket. I've got new pair of gloves, the exact same pair as before, and a uh, new set of chaps. So, very expensive trip so far, but that's all stuff that's going to last me a good while. I got my money's worth out of the last batch, and uh, so this batch should last me a good long while. Not actually stopping for gas, forgot to put in my earplugs, super important to uh, prevent hearing loss with you know really loud highway noise so gonna do that get back on the road all right quick update for you guys so after I left Dothan I looked down and I've got this weird red light on on my dash and for anyone that's got a bike that's not from 2014 or after and not really old um, you'll recognize that as the key light which uh, if it's flashing has to do with your security system but if it's just solid and on means you're throwing some kind of error code related to your to the body of the bike. It's not internal, it's not transmission, it's not drivetrain, it's usually a sensor or something like that. And sure enough, uh, despite my worries that I was gonna end up having to replace the starter during the trip, I don't have to replace the starter. That light comes on when the clutch sensor goes bad. For those of you that don't know, because I didn't know, the clutch sensor sits behind your clutch lever in the housing and it tells the, the bike computer basically, hey, clutch is in, hey, clutch is out. At first I thought it was starter because I couldn't get it to start with the clutch lever in in first gear, which I do sometimes. Could only get it to start when it was in full neutral. I told the tech guy and he said, oh, yep, it's your clutch sensor, definitely. He ran the code on it, clutch sensor. So not fatal, it's not gonna stop my trip. It's not a repair that I can do myself, which sucks. I like to do most of the work if I can, but it's also not a really expensive part and it's not gonna take more than an hour and a half at a shop. So it should be a reasonable replacement. So uh, I've definitely lost a lot of time, but I am on my second gas tank of gas and I have gotten lunch. So we get comfortable, hit the road again. Whew. Whew. Another quick check-in. So I pulled into Redstone Harley Davidson in Northern Alabama on my way to Huntsville. And I guess they're closed on Mondays and Tuesdays, which is really weird. Sundays I get, Mondays during COVID I get, but Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday? What? Whatever. Maybe I'll hit them on the way back. Back on the road we go. Whew, super fast update. Stopped at Harley of Columbia. They don't sell pins anymore, which is weird, but whatever. So got a t-shirt, which is almost as good. And we're headed to the next one. Here we go. That's the second time I've ever been to Redstone Harley Davidson. And the second time I've showed up and they have been closed. So that's super frustrating. And you know what's funny is when I planned this trip with all these stops, I looked at all the websites of every dealership I wanted to stop at. I guess I just slipped up and didn't see that their new Tuesday hours would be closed. So 
that'll happen. Hey guys, just stopped in at Moonshine Harley-Davidson. They carry pins, I got a pin, and I got one more stop. I got 33 minutes to get there. Let's do it. What's up guys? See you on day one. I am in my hotel room in Clarksville, Tennessee with my t-shirt tan, which is obviously super attractive, definitely for sure. Anyway, final thoughts for today. I still love long distance riding. I made a lot of stops today, so I think that really helped break up the monotony of the ride and break up some of the, the soreness that comes with sitting in a seat for three, four hours at a time, going through an entire tank of gas. Um, so it really helped making stops for, for gas, making stops at Harley shops, taking time to stretch, go to the bathroom, drinking a lot of water. Definitely made today a really comfortable day. I am going to eventually do a review on this jacket that I picked up from Harley Davidson of Dothan in Dothan, Alabama. Um, this morning when I went to put on my leather jacket to leave, um, the zipper went boom. And uh, so that jacket was put out of commission. When I bought it, it was old, used, it's a size too big. Uh, but it was a leather jacket, so when I do long rides on the interstate, going at interstate speeds, it was nice to have a leather jacket on. Um, so I bought this to replace it. It's great. I don't see, I don't see like a model number or name or anything on it, but it's that really heavy textile stuff that is uh, pretty windproof as far as the fabric goes. Um, it's not a jacket for warming necessarily it's just a jacket for for riding in warmer weather yeah i'll do a full review on it probably at the end of my trip by the time this video comes out that video might already be out or it's coming soon but um yeah this was um relatively inexpensive compared to a lot of the leather jackets that harley puts out and even some of the other textile jackets that they've made um this was incredibly comfortable I love the high-vis orange. It's not everywhere. I don't love wearing a ton of high-vis orange, but it's enough that if I'm being approached from behind, um, this is gonna catch their eye. Being another dude on a black street glide or black electric glide, it's really easy to see that for people's brains to think that there's nothing there. So having high-vis orange was really nice and gave me a sense of security on the road. Um, and it also has vents, like a lot of vents. Um, I've got two vents under each arm. I've got these really cool vents here on the sides of the chest. I don't know what you guys can see, but uh, so they come down and then you've got this and uh, you roll it up and then it has this strap. <laughs> this is so cool. It has this strap, holds it down. So you have this massive mesh vent for ventilation. Um, it's got two vents on either side. It's got vents coming down the back. Um, and actually, yo, this is so cool. The side vent comes all the way down. So the vents that come from the arms, they actually travel very far. And then of course you've got these vents on the back and actually Oh, I'm just seeing this. Oh, if it's going to be really hot, I'm not going to hit a lot of rain tomorrow. I'm going to have to figure out how to do this jacket. Oh, man. So this in the back does the same thing as in the front. This is a big flap that you roll up and then it's got, yeah, it's got two straps. Check that out to roll it up and put it down. So this is definitely a summer riding jacket. Um, I felt really protected. I felt really comfortable. And what was nice was, as you guys saw, I hit I think six or seven patches of rain and and still wore my jacket um, because it was it was too hot and miserable in the rain gear and I was finding that I was only hitting about five to eight minutes of rain and then I was hitting sun. Um, so then I was just humid in a waterproof jacket and that wasn't really comfortable. So this jacket has been fantastic, 100% would recommend. Um, I'm not being paid by anyone to say that. This like 100% would recommend um just fantastic jacket great investment um i paid 275 for it so um those of you who have never bought a harley jacket that probably sounds like a ton of money and i'm not gonna lie that is a good amount of money um there's no other way to put that but if you have looked at prices of riding jackets leather jackets textile jackets from from harley and from other manufacturers you know that 275 for a textile jacket that is heavy multiple layers and it has a ton of versatility when it comes to ventilation that's a really, 
reasonable price. So really, really, really happy with this purchase. And whoosh, here they are. These are the chaps I bought. They're kind of the standard Harley Davidson chaps or like the second level. I know Harley make, so Harley make chaps that are for like 150, 200 bucks or something like that. Um, these are not those. I sort of wish that they were because uh, paid $325 for these. Mom, dad, fiance, I did. Sorry. Um, but I, uh, I thought about it really hard and if I had not been riding through rain, storms, and wind, I probably would have put off the chap purchase. Um, and I probably would have gone online, found some non Harley brand chaps, would have just bought those, ordered them, they would have gotten to the house when we were back from our trip. It would have been no big deal. I wouldn't have spent, you know, I probably would have spent half that on a pair of off brand chaps. However, because I was riding through the rain, because probably three quarters of the pavement that I rode today was soaked, and because I knew I was going to be doing virtually all interstate riding, um, on some interstates and states where people don't care about speed limits or signals or safety. I knew that the chances of me going down were higher than if I were just riding in decent weather where it wasn't raining and it wasn't where it wasn't really stormy and windy. So I um, figured, you know, if I do go down, I would like to have the use of my legs with their skin on them, if at all possible. So I bought chaps. Um, they're really neat. They have a ton of stretch down the side of the legs. There's probably close to an inch of stretch on each leg. Um, and then I was really worried about the thickness of the actual leg itself when you zip it because um, I have pretty thick thighs, which when I am working out, I mean, I can like squat and deadlift a lot. So not right now, um, but they're still thick. Three C's, three C's of thickness. And what's neat is that um, on the receiving zipper side, Let's see if you guys see that. It has two zippers on each leg. So what that means is when you go to zip them, you can obviously pick which zipper you want, which gives you, yeah, about an inch of versatility, give you another inch of circumference around your leg where you have to zip them to get them to fit. Um, these were super comfortable. They kept me totally dry when I, it's about the second half of today's trip when I put these on with the jacket um, in lieu of the rain gear. When I was riding through rain, my legs were completely dry, which was awesome. Um, the leather is really soft, really pliable, but very strong, um, which is what you expect, especially if you pay as much as I paid for these. They should be quality, and they are. Um, you know, they're great zippers. They're heavy duty. These are, they're YKK zippers. So, um, you know, they're quality zippers. The snaps on the bottom at the cuffs held really, really well. Um, they came with four snaps at the bottom. Two of them had to be trimmed off because I am short. So yeah. So all in all, today was a really good first day. Um, I had planned to stop in and buy pins or t-shirts from eight different dealerships. Uh, three of those went bad. Um, one of them was closed on a Tuesday at 345, which I found to be really weird. Another one, I just missed the closing time because I lost some time in Dothan and due to weather. And then the other one, I didn't research really well and uh, it was in Nashville, but it was actually just a retail store. Um, really kind of hole in the wall place. It was maybe like the storefront was maybe 20 feet wide and it was closed um, at 5.30 on a Tuesday. So undoubtedly due to COVID-19, whatever or something. Um, so I only got to five dealerships. Two of them didn't sell pins, which I thought was weird. Um, and if you're wondering why I was looking for pins, some people collect poker chips, some people collect t-shirts. Um, I do buy t-shirts. I think they're cool. You can't really have too many Harley t-shirts as far as I'm concerned, but um, I like to make sure that my t-shirts are different, unique. Um, they don't look like they were printed in like 1996 which is sometimes an issue finding shirts that don't look like they were printed in 1996. So if I see a design that is cool, modern, sleek, or in a neat color, whatever, I'll pick it up. But I really like pins because as opposed to t-shirts with shop names and locations or poker chips with 
shop names and locations. I buy pins, put them on my jacket, um, because every single one of those has a story attached to it as to why I was at that shop, when I went to that shop, what I thought about that shop. Let me show you. All right, so this is my jacket or my cut, whatever you guys want to call it. Um, and as you can see, I've got a decent number of, of pins. Someday I'll do like a tour of my jacket, but, um, or a tour of my vest, if you, if you will. So um, I've got some from some Florida dealerships. These are from, these are from today. These are the three I got today. I've got a street glide patch. I've got my hog mileage patches, which I'm missing two. I should have 10,000 and a 20,000 coming. I need to update my mileage. And then I've got the metal pins for those. I don't think those will stay. I think those will end up going in a display with all the other ones that I earn over the years or something like that. Um, and then I've got just a big Harley patch on the back. So that's my vest. That's why I'm looking for pins. I think they're fun. So yeah, that's my day. It was a good day to ride. I know some other people might not feel that way. Some people are just not rainy weather riders and that's totally okay. What I would never want to do is pressure someone who doesn't feel comfortable riding in the rain to do so on the interstate for, you know, 600 some miles. That's not safe. So um, don't do that if you're not comfortable with it. But I am comfortable with it. I've done a lot of interstate riding, uh, which I talked about a little bit today. And I think it's fun. I think it's super fun. My butt didn't even get sore today. And uh, on every other long distance trip I've ridden, my butt gets super sore, not today. Um, so that even, you know, that just made everything more enjoyable. Um, so those are my final thoughts. If you aren't subscribed, go ahead and hit subscribe, ring that bell, lets you know every time I release a new video. Um, I've got videos coming out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, starting, uh, well, that should have started back in June. Um, it is June, whoa, what is time? Time is a construct. Anyway, so be on the lookout for that. I do Motovlog Mondays, bike review how-tos and whys on Wednesdays, road rants on Fridays. Sometimes I do special stuff on Saturdays. So if you're not subscribed, hit subscribe. If you've stuck around this long, um, you must at least not hate this video, hit the like button. If I did or said something meaningful or helpful or interesting or funny or totally stupid, let me know down in the comments. I will respond to every comment on all my videos, all the way up to a thousand subscribers. Bet, promise, I'll do that. So anyway, I'm a two wheel teacher. Stay tuned for part two for day two. Uh, that's tomorrow, but it'll probably be next week for you. I'm the two-wheel teacher. Thanks for stopping by, guys. I'll see you on the road.